It's Wednesday, June 8th, 2011. I'm Kevin McShann, and this is the McShann Sports Beat Report. <laughs> from the postseason. I think that they're trying very hard to put this in their rearview mirror. 
the be the vacating the, the national championship is an embarrassment to the school when people look at two thousand four they'll say, Who won that national title? Everybody'd say, Well, USC did, except it lost it when it was uh, found to violate NCAA rules. It's further embarrassment, but I think mostly the university knew it was coming and just wants to move forward. Consequences occur when the transgressions you commit violate the rule of law that everyone is expected to adhere to. And on Monday, the BCS levied a severe, heavy, yet expected sanction against the USC football program when it stripped the school of its 2004 national championship. This decision was not unexpected, but required the NCAA's May 26 rejection of USC's appeal of sanctions stemming from the Reggie Bush investigation to move forward and reach a final conclusion. The BCS ruling vacates the results of the 2005 Orange Bowl, the national championship game for 2004, a game in which USC trounced the Oklahoma Sooners by a final score of 55 to 19. Monday's ruling also wipes out the Trojans' participation in the 2006 Rose Bowl, in which USC lost to the Texas Longhorns by a final of 41 to 38 in the championship game. As a result of the BCS Presidential Oversight Committee ruling on Monday, there will be no national champion in the record books for the 2004-2005 season. The sanctions USC received for their transgressions included a two-year ban on postseason play, which began last year, and a reduction of 30 scholarships over the next three seasons. Despite the dejecting news, the Trojans received on Monday. The ruling by the BCS does not require them to relinquish their 2004 Associated Press National Championship. Bill Hancock, the executive director of the BCS, took some time out on Monday to join SportsCenter to discuss why the BCS decided that stripped the Trojans of their national championship achievement in 2004. We continue to follow our breaking news story here on SportsCenter, and the BCS has stripped USC of its 2004 football national championship. Of course, this is tied to the ineligibility of former Heisman Trophy winner Reggie Bush, who was found by the NCAA to have received improper benefits, and of course, Reggie Bush did return his Heisman Trophy. USC Athletic Director Pat Hayden releasing a statement a short time ago that reads, the BCS alerted us today that their presidents have voted to vacate USC's 2005 BCS championship game victory. This was not an unexpected outcome. We will comply with all requirements mandated by the result of this BCS vote. Joining us now on Sports Center is Executive Director of the Bowl Championship Series, Bill Hancock. Bill, this is the first time in the BCS Bowl era that a title has been vacated. How was this decision reached? Yes, it is the first time. Uh, it's an unfortunate circumstance, obviously. Uh, our group had a policy, a procedure to go through, and uh, followed the procedure to the letter. Uh, basically, you know, the BCS is not an investigative body, and so we would wait till the NCAA finishes with its uh, uh, actions on this, and they finished, of course, a couple of weeks ago. And our group of presidents then went through our procedures and determined that, uh, that vacating was in order. When you talk about following everything to the letter and following these procedures, what was involved there? What ultimately led you to say that we need to come to this decision to vacate that national championship? Because our group's not an investigative body, it really was just a matter of waiting until the NCAA process finished, uh, including all the appeals, and then sitting down and reviewing the actions the NCAA had taken and deciding then how they would affect the BCS. Has there been uh, any discussion at all about potentially awarding the trophy to another team like the Auburn Tigers who went undefeated in 04 but were kept out of that BCS title game? There was not any discussion of that in this specific instance, uh, but there was a lot of discussion about it when our procedure was created. 
by the president uh, two or three years ago, and it was just determined that, uh, obviously, uh, the, the, the teams cannot be put together to, uh, to have a rematch, um, and, and that, it, that we wanted to be consistent with how the NCAA applies in their championships. And obviously, had USC not been ineligible at that time, it's not possible to know which team would have played in the championship game, or certainly who would have won that game. At the end of the day, and of course, this does set a precedent, is there some kind of message that the Bowl Championship Series is trying to send? Oh, you know, our games are showcase events for college football. And I think one of the best ways of ensuring that is uh, for them to remain that way is for us to foster full compliance with NCAA rules. And I think that's the bottom line in all this. As far as history is concerned, you know, some 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, when people look at national championships year by year, there won't be a team next to the 2004 season. Take out the procedures and what you followed to get to this point. How difficult a decision was this? You know, I think we'll all look back in 20 years and say that was unfortunate and, uh, and then move forward. Uh, really, once, once we had our procedures in place, uh, we just followed the procedures. And uh, I, I don't believe it was a difficult decision for our group once the NCAA made this decision. ESPN's college football analyst, Pat Fority discusses what's next for USC and how this whole ordeal affects the legacy of former Heisman Trophy winner Reggie Bush, who eventually had to forfeit his Heisman Trophy because of his involvement in this entire scandal, and Pete Carroll, who served as USC's head coach for just over a decade. Pat, what does this news signify to you? Well, to me, Steve, it signifies that, that college football is going to be serious about uh, applying whatever punishments they can to, to major cheaters, even if it's a retroactive punishment. And, and I do think it's significant. I mean, I think the people at USC are very sure in to have to give back to crystal football. Uh, you know, I think that Reggie Bush and people who were involved in this have a, have a stay on their legacies now at those schools. And, and I do think it sends a pretty good signal that, you know what, even if even if it takes years to get it right, they're going to try to get it right in the end. What is that legacy for USC? You know, it, it, it's, it's very much a, a twin legacy of, of you know great excitement and accomplishment, but at the same time, it's ultimately tainted by by what did transpire and what was going on behind the scenes and what Reggie Bush uh, got from from agents. And you know, I think that it really does sully one of the great periods in USC's history. As you well know, Auburn finished 13-0 and that year, beat Virginia Tech in the Sugar Bowl, finished second in the final pools. What do the Tigers deserve? Uh, I don't think they deserve anything more than they've already gotten, which is the, the satisfaction of having an undefeated season. You know, the, the bitter thing for them is that they never got to play in the championship game. And, you know, I think probably for them looking and seeing what, you, what was going on at USC and knowing the circumstances under which they did get to play for a title, that, that makes it all the more frustrating in retrospect. But I, I think leaving it vacant is, is the better way to go. I think that that sends a strong message that uh, what we're going to do is just we're, we're going to say there was no title winner because the team that won it on the field was cheating. In its heyday, the USC football program was one of the most dominant and talented programs of its era. And at the time, they were rewarded for their tremendous achievement. However, on Monday, they had to pay a steep price for not adhering to the rules of the land, but such is life when you don't toe the company line. For Reggie Bush and Pete Carroll, they have to know that their transgressions led to one of the biggest college football scandals in college football history, and they have to live with that for the rest of their lives. For the university itself, it's a chance to start anew with a clean slate as they try to wipe the stain off their once proud name. Kevin McShan, McShan, Sports Beat, reports.